to take a fair amount of our life away from the will of God because he says to us don't worry don't worry yesterday Sheila sent a, a song by Don Moen to us in the family and it just blessed me so much and I thought I need to just play it for you and just allow it to speak to you so I'd like to you to listen to it now as we just hear the song When you prayed every prayer that you know how to pray Just remember the Lord will hear And the answer is on its way Our God is able He is mighty He is faithful And He never sleeps The Bible tells us to cast all of our cares on Him because He cares for us. My friend, this is more than a promise. It's a command. So be at rest because today God is working in ways that you cannot see. He never sleeps. He never slumbers. So he never God never sleeps. He never slumbers. 
I had to stop and think about that for just a, a while. What does it mean to not sleep and not slumber? And I got this just wonderful picture and I thought, Lord, is this from my life? And I, I couldn't find a, a point like that and just thinking of somebody not sleeping. And it brought to me this little child in maybe a hospital bed. And every now and then the child opens his or her eyes and looks and right in front is a mom or a dad sitting. And the child closes the eyes and sleeps for a bit and then opens it again. And there's the familiar sight of mom and dad just watching over the child. And suddenly it brought home just that reality that that happens all through our lives. All through our lives, God's eyes never blink. And I thought to myself, how wonderful is that? Just to know that wherever we are, whether we're on a sick bed and, or we're going through a difficult time, or we need help, we're having a tough time at the office, decisions that need to be made, and we turn and look for that one stabilizing person who says to us, I never slumber, I never sleep. And I thought that is enough reason not to worry. Is it? If I know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords watches over me all the time, that he knows everything that I'm going through. He knows all the things that may, I may need. As Jesus says, he knows. Don't worry about clothes or any of that, the food that you'll eat. Don't even worry about tomorrow. Because your Heavenly Father knows exactly what you need. Psalm 121, isn't it? It's 4 and 5 says this, Indeed he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. Here's what I, I felt the Lord giving me this evening for each one of us here. Reasons not to worry. Reasons not to worry. And the first one is this, that the king of the universe watches over each one of us. His eye is on us, doesn't blink once, never goes to sleep. Is always on us. And that is enough reason for us to say, okay, somebody bigger than me is watching over me. I don't need to worry. The second scripture that came to mind was this. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you're trying to move something and then somebody comes alongside who has more strength than you and without any problem, almost nonchalantly pushes that thing away. I've been in a situation like that and it just made me look at that person and say, wow, what strength. And God says to us, in every situation that you feel inadequate, my adequacy will be enough for you. In every situation where you are weak, whether it is weakness in terms of affliction, whether it is weakness in terms of 
leadership, whether it is weakness in terms of uh, strength, weakness in terms, of, in terms of going through a difficult time or a circumstance, God says, don't worry. For in that particular place, I will come in and do what is necessary when you don't have the strength. God watches over you. You don't need to worry. God strengthens you. You don't need to worry. I love the way Paul ends it with such confidence and almost bordering on the arrogant, isn't it? He says, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities. I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. In our weakness, and when we acknowledge it, Christ has an opportunity to shine. And so he says, therefore I take pleasure in it. Puts a twist to our weaknesses, isn't it? That we can look at it and say, okay, I guess in this weakness, Christ has an opportunity to shine. How many times have you reached a dead end and then you stopped and say, I see no way. I can't wait to see how God takes me through this. Have you been there? Many times, isn't it? Because when we've reached the end of our resources, God hasn't even started with His. God hasn't even started. God strengthens you. Psalm 66, 19 and 20 says, But certainly God has heard. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving kindness from me. Why should we not worry? Because it says, God has heard, God heeds, God has not turned away, and his loving kindness is upon me. His loving kindness is upon me. Sometimes we wonder as Don Moen sang, did God hear that prayer? But we know that every prayer that we pray finds its way up into the heavenly places, in the throne room of God. Revelation 5.8, Revelation 8.5 bears that truth. Every prayer. And as those prayers go up and we wait for God, we need to be able to say, I'm not going to worry. Why? Because God has heard. Because God has heeded my prayer. That God has not turned away. And His loving kindness is upon me. God watches over you. God strengthens you. God hears your prayer. And finally, God cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7 Give all your worries and cares to God. For He cares about you. That's such an important statement, isn't it? Because who but somebody who cares about you will want to take your worries? Isn't it? I, mean, I don't think you're, the people who don't like you will want to come alongside of you and say, let me share your burden. Last person, isn't it? God says, I'll take it. You can cast every care you have on me. Why? Because I care. Because I care. About each one of us here. Somebody said, to love is to care. And to care is to be vulnerable. And how vulnerable he was, isn't it? When he stretched out his hands and died for you and for me on the cross. Cast it, he says. Put it on me. Because I care for you. I care for every single one of you. Don't worry. Maybe you've come into this service saying, at least for this one hour, I'm not going to try and think about what's going to meet me when I step out of these doors again. 
at least for this one hour I'll hold those things at abeyance because I'm still thinking about them and still worrying about them. Maybe just these four reasons why you can trust God to take you through it are what you need to stand firm on. God watches over you, neither slumbers nor sleeps. God strengthens you in your times of weakness as His power gets manifested in those times. God hears a prayers, hears them, heeds them, and then comes alongside with His loving kindness, never ever turning away. And then God says to each one of us here today, if you've got cares that are weighing heavily upon you, I invite you, cast them on me because I simply care for you. I simply care for you, he says. I wonder whether that's the invitation that you needed and you've been waiting for. Maybe the whole of today or this week or this month just to be able to cast that care that's been stealing your joy and your peace and put you in hopeless, seemingly hopeless situations. But tonight the invitation is will you cast it on Him simply because He cares for you. The Lord's table has been so beautiful a place, isn't it, to come and do this kind of business with Him. And each Wednesday we have come and just enjoyed the sweet presence of the Lord here in different ways each, each week. And today, today he says, don't walk away from here with your worries. I'm big enough to take them. Cast them on me. There's a beautiful hymn that leads us into our time of communion. And I'd like for us to sing it just remain seated as we look at that hymn. It's Break Thou the Bread of Life, Dear Lord, to me. As you sing it, let the words minister to you. Prepare your heart for our time at the table. And remember, begin to mark those worries and get ready to cast them upon the Lord. <laughs>